The structure of the heart. The heart is enclosed in a double membrane called the pericardium. The pericardium holds the heart in place. The pericardium consists of two layers, an outer fibrous layer and an inner serous layer. The fibrous pericardium is strong and thick. This makes it a rigid layer that prevents the heart from rapidly overfilling. The serous pericardium is the inner thin layer. It is also divided into two layers, the parietal serous, which lines the internal surface of the fibrous pericardium, and the visceral serous, which is adherent to and forms the outer layer of the heart, also called the epicardium. Between the fibrous and serous pericardium is a space called the pericardial cavity. The pericardial cavity contains serous fluid, which is responsible for lubrication and reducing friction between the heart and surrounding organs when it contracts. The heart wall consists of three distinct layers of tissue, epicardium, myocardium and endocardium. The epicardium is the thin outermost layer of connective tissue and fat cells located just under the pericardium. The epicardium provides a layer of protection to the heart. The myocardium is the thickest layer and is composed of cardiac muscle cells. Cardiac muscle cells are unique to other types of muscle because they are electrical conductors. This helps coordinate the contraction of the heart. The muscle cells in the myocardium are connected to each other by intercalated discs. Intercalated discs strongly adhere muscle cells to one another to keep the muscle together during the strong contraction phase. Intercalated discs also conduct the electrical impulses across the branching muscle fibers to synchronize the contractions. The endocardium is the thin innermost layer of the heart. It is comprised primarily of endothelial cells. Its function is similar to the endothelium of blood vessels as they need to provide a smooth, non-adhering surface for good blood flow. The endocardium also helps to regulate the composition of the fluid surrounding the muscle cells to affect their performance. Coronary arteries are responsible for supplying the blood to the tissues of the heart. The heart requires a strong blood supply to function properly and so the heart is very vascular. Trabeculae carnae are pillars of muscle that branch irregularly across the lining walls of the ventricles. These bundles serve to reduce turbulence and suction and so prevent backflow of blood into the atria. Chambers of the heart. The heart is a hollow, muscular organ that is made up of four chambers, the right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium and left ventricle. The atria are smaller than the ventricles and have thinner, less muscular walls. The atria act as collection chambers of the heart that receive blood from the body. The blood from the atria is emptied into the ventricles which act as a strong pumping chambers that push blood out of the heart. The chambers are separated by dividing walls called septum. The interatrial septum separates the atria and the interventricular septum separates the ventricles. The valves of the heart. The atria pass blood into the ventricles via one-way passages called valves. These valves prevent the backflow of blood. There are two types of valves. There are atrioventricular valves, AV valves, which allow blood to flow from the atria into the ventricles. These include the tricuspid valve on the right-hand side of the heart and the mitral valve or bicuspid valve on the left-hand side of the heart. The AV valves are attached to the ventricles by cord-like tendons called chordae tendinae. The other type of valves are the semilunar valves, which allow the passage of blood from the ventricles to the arteries that carry the blood away from the heart. The semilunar valve on the right hand side of the heart is the pulmonary valve, and the one on the left hand side is called the aortic valve. They are smaller than the AV valves and do not have chordae tendinae to hold them in place. Blood flow in the heart can be divided into two parts, the right side and the left side of the heart. Oxygen-poor blood enters the right atrium of the heart through the superior and inferior vena cava. The superior vena cava brings blood back from the upper body, whilst the inferior vena cava brings blood from the lower body. Upon contraction of the right atrium, the tricuspid valve opens and the blood is pumped into the right ventricle. When the right ventricle is filled, the tricuspid valve will close, preventing blood from flowing back into the right atrium. Contraction of the right ventricle will open the pulmonary valve and blood is pumped into the pulmonary artery, which goes into the lungs for oxygenation. The pulmonary valve closes to prevent backflow into the ventricle. After oxygenation, the blood returns to the left side of the heart via the pulmonary veins and enters the left atrium. Contraction of the left atrium opens the mitral valve, and the blood is pumped into the left ventricle. Once the left ventricle is filled, the mitral valve will close just like the tricuspid valve does. From the left ventricle, 
Contraction will cause the aortic valve to open, and blood is pumped through the aorta into the rest of the body. Likewise, the aortic valve closes to prevent black flow into the ventricle. It is important to know that contraction of the left and right ventricle occur simultaneously. Whilst the ventricles contract, filling of both atria will occur. The same simultaneous contraction also occurs in both atria and the cycle repeats. It should be noted that although the same volume of blood is moved by either side of the heart, the wall of the left ventricle is the thickest as it needs to pump blood to the rest of the body against the blood pressure. The cardiac output of your heart describes the volume of blood being pumped by the heart per minute. It can be calculated by multiplying the stroke volume by the heart rate and it is typically measured in liters per minute. The heart rate is the number of contractions per minute that occur in the heart. The average heart rate of an adult ranges from 60 to 100 beats per minute. Having a resting heart rate that is lower than 60 beats per minute is defined as bradycardia, and having a resting heart rate that is higher than 100 beats per minute is defined as tachycardia. The stroke volume is the volume of blood pumped from the left ventricle per beat, and it is given by the difference between the end diastolic and the end systolic volume. The end diastolic volume is the amount of blood collected in a ventricle during diastole, which is the relaxation period. The end systolic volume is the volume of blood remaining in a ventricle after contraction. The unit of measurement is typically milliliters per beat. In a 70 kg male, the end diastolic volume is approximately 120 mils, and the end systolic volume is approximately 50 mils, giving a stroke volume of 70 milliliters per beat. The stroke volume can be affected by several factors, such as the size of the heart, duration of contraction, contractility, and the amount of aerobic exercise that is performed on a regular basis. Electrical signals which activate the cardiac muscle cells are automatically generated at the sinoatrial node, located in the right atrium. The signal travels to the atrioventricular node, activating the left and right atria along the way. The signal then travels through the bundle of His to the Purkinje fibers. Purkinje fibers are conductive tissues that penetrate into the myocardium to deliver the signal impulses from the SA node to the muscle cells. There is a delay in the signal traveling from the AV node to the Purkinje fibers of about 150 milliseconds, which serves to contract the ventricles slightly after the atria. This maximizes blood flow through the heart. The SA node passively generates signals at a normal rate of about 70 beats per minute. However, the atrioventricular node and Purkinje fibers also passively generate electrical signals in case of failure of the preceding signals. The atrioventricular node will generate signals at 50 beats per minute while the Purkinje fibers are slower, at 30 beats per minute. The heart's function is controlled by parasympathetic and sympathetic innervation. Parasympathetic innervation slows the heart rate by decreasing the rate of fire of the SA node and increasing the delay of the signal in the AV node. Sympathetic innervation increases heart rate by increasing the rate of fire in the SA node and decreasing the delay through the AV node. The parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems can also decrease or increase the contractile force of the ventricles. The heart's control over blood supply to the body can be compromised when disease is present. Heart disease is most commonly associated with heart valve disease, coronary heart disease and septal defects. Heart valves can have three basic kinds of problems, regurgitation, stenosis and atresia. Regurgitation occurs if a valve doesn't close tightly. Blood leaks back into the chambers rather than flowing forward through the heart or into an artery. Stenosis occurs if the flaps of a valve thicken, stiffen or fuse together, preventing the heart valve from fully opening. As a result, not enough blood flows through the valve. Artresia occurs if a heart valve lacks any opening for blood to pass through. This is a congenital condition. In order to treat these conditions, valve repair or replacement is required. Balloon valvular palsy is a minimally invasive repair procedure used to reduce the effect of stenosis. A balloon catheter is inserted into a blood vessel fed into the heart. The end of the catheter is inflated when placed into the valve, crushing plaque and returning the valve to its full functioning capacity. The bileaflet valve is commonly chosen as a replacement for a damaged mitral valve. The valve is comprised of two semicircular structures called leaflets. In order for blood to pass through the valve, the leaflets rotate to the open position at an angle ranging from 75 to 90 degrees, providing a clear passage with minimal resistance. However, blood clots can form around the hinges, requiring patients to take blood thinning medication like warfarin for the remainder of their lifetime. Coronary heart disease is the term used to describe the buildup of plaque inside the coronary arteries. The plaque is prone to break or rupture, having significant health consequences including angina or myocardial infarction, also known as a heart attack. Ruptured plaque often simulates the creation of a blood clot within the blood vessel. This thrombus can further obstruct blood flow. 
The thrombus may also lead to an embolism whereby the travelling blood clot can obstruct major blood vessels. A blockage can also deprive heart tissue of oxygen, causing it to die. Death of heart tissue often leads to myocardial infarction, which is fatal if not treated quickly. Patent foramen ovale, or PFO, is a hole between the left and right atria of the heart. This hole exists in everyone before birth, but usually closes shortly after being born. When the hole doesn't close, it is known as a PFO. Whilst a fetus develops in the womb, a small opening exists between the two upper chambers of the heart. A fetus doesn't use their own lungs, instead they rely on the mother for oxygenated blood. The foramen ovale helps circulate blood more quickly in the absence of lung function. A lack of closure of the hole may increase the risk of paradoxical thromboembolic stroke. However, this is very rare and most current research indicates that the PFO will not be detrimental to long-term health.